Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So this is uh, the next installment of the uh, Project Egress build uh, from my perspective. Um, I was asked to build a part for uh, this Adam Savage uh, Tested.com um, collaboration, which was pretty cool. Um, this next piece is a large monolithic uh, stainless steel piece that uh, had a lot of steps to it and uh, <laughs> um, Anyway, it was a lot of work, so uh, uh, I had to build a kind of an interesting fixture that I'm going to show you here in a second, and then we'll see the machining and uh, how I use that fixture to create these uh, curved openings in the, in the part. So let's check out the fixture. All right, here's this is a fixturus maximus here, and um, this particular fixture I built it because. Um, my rotary table is not big enough to do this particular part. Uh, I got rid of my monster rotary table and actually I'm on the hunt for a, uh, the correct size one for, for my shop. Um, the idea here is, and uh, hopefully this doesn't blow out, is this fixture was used to cut these curved openings here. These are, this is a, a, a vent port, uh, air or gas comes through these, through these openings. Um, and then it leaves um, some ribs. Let's see, do I, uh, anyway, there's some ribs left in the middle. Um, so there's a radius in here, and there's a radius in here, and then we have little radii in the corner. Okay, so that's what this fixture is about. So there's an inner radius and an outer radius, and you'll see here in a few minutes uh, uh, machining that. And I just machine them by hand, um, and that is that I actually use this lever to to guide the cutting. And these stop pins that you see here represent the the, the end positions of those curved slots, right? So that's that's one side. And then if I swap these over, put this pin in here, like that. Now that's the stop for this side, which is up here. And then this is the longer slot here, or the the outer radii here well, in this case. Go back to this. So that outer radii and that inner radii. Okay. So um, actually it, it's an interesting technique because um, the, the cutting forces are surprisingly low when you have um, a sharp tool, a sharp end mill. So um, this is completely manageable by hand. Now clearly if you have a gear drive or a worm drive, you know, you get a smoother cut and all that. But um, as you'll see, uh, this comes out really good. So, uh, um, and I'm gonna save this fixture actually because this uh, potentially has a use, you know, by adding holes to this, I can kind of do whatever I want and maybe, you know, use it as some kind of indexer or something and this chuck just kind of mounts right on it. So. Anyway, let's uh, let's see some machining and uh, how this part was created. That's uh Five and a quarter inch diameter, 303 stainless, and it's uh, 33 inches long, 850 millimeters long, and uh, 135 millimeters in diameter, 303 stainless steel. Uh, I picked this up at, uh, at an estate sale <laughs> for not much money, and I need a I need a chunk off like this, but I'm going to dice it up into some usable pieces. Where we're going to be. Um, down just, a, just a whisker. Let's try that. That's probably fine. Let's see if we can break a chip properly. Looking for that chip to break nicely. That's stainless steel, by the way.
measurement there. Just to see how that's... Yeah, okay, that'll work. That's just dandy. That's how you gouge your hand pulling on that. Well, it went in, but all right, I gotta get some.
there's a couple ways you can handle a, a curve like this. And um, I was going to make a form tool, but I've been fighting some chatter problems just carving this stuff out. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to step turn this, which is, you know, functionally what a cam system does. So what I can do is from the, from the model, I can determine um, different points that intersect the actual, the actual desired curve, right? And then if I go to finer and finer steps or increments, basically I'm, I'm approximating that curve. And I know that uh, some of these intersections are on that curve and then I can blend uh, from there. And that's probably the better part of Valor in this case. Um, there's an access problem getting a tool up in here to that depth and, and all that. And like I said, I've been having some chatter trouble here that I've been fighting all morning. Um, so I think I'm just going to continue to step turn a little bit and then we'll see what it looks like and then uh, uh, and see uh, about maybe blending those steps in uh, uh, kind of old school. Let's do a little blending and I'm just going to use a, a machinist scraper here and you'll be surprised what you can do with this. So I'm get my head in there. I'm just blending the peaks because I know those lie on the curves, right? And just so you know, this curve is is purely uh, it's decorative. It's not a functional curve, so it just needs to look good and be the basic size uh, and radii that uh, are called out. Bad for scrapers and uh, and uh, old school stuff. So 
But when you don't have a CNC lathe and you still got to do the job, there you go. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we did all the lathe work. We cut this radius in here. It took us a while to get that right. But you can see here now what we're doing. And we're going to cut these openings in here. There's six openings in here. And there's some peculiarities with those. And I don't have uh, a rotary table big enough to do this. Um, you know, potentially I could do it on the dividing head, but that's a little light duty. So I came up with another uh, way to do this that I think is going to be pretty efficient and uh, not not the best, but uh, um, it's we'll certainly get these openings in here and they'll look nice. So, all right, what you're looking at here is the Binford 2000 uh, rotary table. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, um, it's a six jaw chuck, it's basically mounted to a plate with a basically a bronze bushing and then uh, I have a, an assembly underneath uh, and a washer so I can kind of preload the tension and get the tension that I want. So the general idea is um, these are the openings that we're going to cut and you can see there's some straight sections here so what we'll do first is We'll poke holes where the, all those intersections are. That's easy enough, right? So the idea is just remove as much material and uh, uh, get it out of your way, right? Um, and then to do these, these straight ribs here, that's just a straight milling operation. And with the, uh, the Binford 2000 here, I can uh, um, start with this aligned with the x-axis, which I have a power feed on, and I can get a nice smooth cut. And then when I'm finished with those, uh, four sides, or oops, let's uh, put that on there kind of like that, and then I can index to the next hole there and do these two or four, and then uh, one more index, and I do all those. So, boom, I got all the straights done. Now, the cool part, well, I thought it was a cool part anyway, <laughs> is you know, when you lay this out in CAD, um, uh, you can probably see there's a couple of holes over here, right? So, um, these are these are arc segments here, right? So the uh, let's see, this is that one now. Okay, so uh, the way I have the pins in it right now, when when we're sitting straight like this, I plop the end mill right at that spot right there. I'm going to simulate here, and then I rotate and come up against the pin. All right, and then um, that cuts that arc segment. So it just limits my travel. Um, from that point to that point. And then uh, I have another set of pins to go the other way. So I don't want a climb cut, I want a conventional mill. So this way I go this way, and then this one I go this way. All right? does that make sense? <laughs> so uh, anyway, you, you guys will get to see it. I just figured I'd explain it a little bit uh, um, to, uh, so you guys, could, uh, you guys could understand what, <laughs> what the brain of a maniac uh, uh, comes up with. So. First step here is we're just chopping out the uh, the excess materials by plunging in Z with an end mill just to kind of carve it out. And then this one I was trying the uh, uh, the rotation movement on this, and you'll see that in a sec. I'll I'll film the the, the subsequent ones. Uh, what we're using here, uh, this is from my buddy uh, Dennis Nolan of uh, Niagara Cutters. This is a uh, special end mill it's a uh, it's called a stabilizer and uh, he's kind of personally responsible for a lot of the design work around it and it's a kind of a variable flute geometry um, that reduces chatter and uh, has better chip evacuation so uh, but we're 
Uh, we're probably uh, abusing the hell out of it here uh, in what we're doing, but uh, it's working great. And uh, so what we're doing is we're just plunging out and removing excess materials. So we'll do a couple. Operating pretty nicely, and then I'm just going to scoot over a little bit and take out the next little cusp. Like that. Well, that Niagara stabilizer uh, <laughs> withstood the uh, the abuse. It's not chipped. It's still sharp as a monkey's uncle, and uh, I think we're going to use it for the uh, the finishing as well. So it looked pretty rough before. Still looks rough, but uh, you're getting the idea of what these ports are going to look like once they're once they're milled out. So uh, we're going to get started on the uh, the finishing work here, which is a little more. A little more tense uh, in that uh, we're trying to get decent finishes and um, um, and accurate surfaces. So let's uh, let's go for it. See how that worked in the corner? It's pretty amazing. You guys ready for this? Watch the uh, Binford 2000 do its thing. So, I'm gonna go partial. I'm just hand feeding it here, as you can see. That stabilizer is really working good. So I just go to the stops. So I don't have to watch a dial or do anything weird. I can pay attention to smooth and steady feeding like that. Now this is the uh, only nervous part for me is the climb cutting coming back, but it's this tool uh, spring pressure that we're dealing with. It's gonna get greedy and do the whole thing. Yeah, so the pressure is pretty light. Nothing alarming, nothing not controllable. I intentionally built in a fair amount of friction into the pivot. And we'll come, you know what? I'm just gonna come out of there. That's what I'm gonna do. 
Uh, finger check is good. Yeah, I'm happy. We're doing some of the inner ones now. So my experience with this stabilizer, this Niagara stabilizer so far is, um, this thing's pretty badass. Um, I'm gonna take this whole thing here, all the ridges and everything in one crack. Um, this tool seems to behave itself better when it's really fully loaded, and uh, which is kind of amazing. So I've reset the pins so that I, I get this rotation now. And once again, I'm conventional milling as opposed to climb milling because uh, I was just a little nervous, uh, you know, hand feeding uh, climb milling. So uh, but let's go for it here. Let's see what happens. I'm on my numbers, double check so I don't bozo this. And uh, we're going to sneak down, get the full depth there like that, and then go to town. up against my stop and then get out so there it is simple as that okay all right five more to go <laughs> here's another shot of the uh, the stop pins um, these are for the internal rotation here and I think it's only 26 degrees of, uh, of swing and then this hole over here uh, we hop this pin over and uh, so we're trapped between two pins and we can't over travel uh, and that one's uh, 40 degrees or something like that I can't remember now the number but anyway that's the internal rotation and then I can just pop these out and uh, put them in a different spot so that's that deal Okay. And um, just by luck of the draw, um, I I got a chunk, a large chunk of nearly optimal diameter 303 stainless uh, at an estate sale, um, and um, it's actually uh, a part of a friend of mine's estate that passed away, and um, so she would be uh, like excited to know that. Uh, that that stainless got used for a really cool project like this.